Hello and welcome. I had this idea today where I went like, I went to Google Scholar and I typed in 66MA Geology Formation. Maybe of this nature. And I just started looking through, like I've came across this paper for instance, or this region. I'm not, I'm not sure if this paper, but this region. Not, I don't think it was about dinosaurs, it's probably not that paper. Point is, I was just, uh, maybe I can go to my videos real quick. That looked cool. That looks super cool. Is it, oh, it's gone. I believe. Oh, there it is. That. Oh, that looks so cool. I'll have to check that out soon. Maybe make a video uh, with it. I don't want to. I feel bad making like straight up reaction videos. Okay, but before I get distracted, I made this video the events events of the KT boundary. I made this post where I, um, within the events of the KT boundary, was just kind of an ass, assuming that I would just straight up get, like, negative responses. This post, pardon me, sir. <laughs> Uh, besides Chicxulub, I've came across the date of 66 million and other studies of the Earth as being relevant to some aspect of it. I was hoping people would be so kind as to offer any additional geological features with similar dates globally. And then I just went through all these, which I talked about in the last video. And I've gotten, like, positive feedback, so that's cool. I appreciate it. I was just like, they're gonna fucking, they're gonna hate it, they're gonna hate it. No one's, like, lashed out at it yet. It's been kind of just left alone, I guess. Which is cool. Okay, so, today, while hanging out with my family, because that's what I should be doing, I, I was, we were watching Top Gun. <laughs> so while we were watching Top Gun, I was on my phone doing this, looking for articles and just taking notes sitting there taking notes like beep, beep, beep. <laughs> as we watch top gun on my phone taking notes like just to set the scene <laughs> two pairs of aunts and uncles and my parents and i around this tv with me taking notes in a chair. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Here we are. Paleocene latitude of some arc that I've never heard of indicates a multi stage India Eurasia collision. It occurred to me, I was like, wait a minute. Like, didn't the Himalayas have some 66 million relationship? also that I came across in the past. Like, there's certainly ones that I did not list here that I was aware of in the past. And I think the Himalayas was one, so I, I Googled into it. I Googled into it. Uh, come to find out the trans Tethian sub subduction zone. Trans Tethian subduction zone existed south of the Eurasian continent and north of the Indian subcontinent. So, between India and Eurasia, in some manner, this region appears to have filled, honestly, with the Tethian ocean like a basically a region that just filled with magma and was a gaping hole that wasn't yet compacted because it was pushing outward initially uh, in 
until currents later on came along and influenced the region. And so this system was active, the subduction zone between the Indian subcontinent and Eurasian continent was active between 66 and 62 million years. So right then, pretty much like kicking off at that time, motions began as like the Pacific puts a current outward, which probably like pushed India, which really was maybe becoming more like an island initially. Like it was part of, it was initially conjoined to Asia and Antarctica and Africa, I think Antarctica, I, I haven't really like pieced together the Indian Ocean that much, pretty sure the Antarctica was there, anyway, it was conjoined on the pre-expansion Earth in a way where there was a single landmass, and then a current entered the space between India and Asia, and physically opened a gap that created a temporary, like, ocean bed that didn't have continental crust above it because it physically opened a hole that then widened and filled with the just mantle material, it seems, where there was ophiolites deposited in the region. Uh, the, from a, a earlier time, let me see. The first ophiolite abductions onto the northern Indian margin also occurred at this time. Collision of India. A rapid, rapid India Eurasia convergence between 135 to, to 50 million years, which is really when the energy of this supernova in the Pacific is propagating. It, it begins around the Baja BC stuff, so it really starts to show 100, especially, but like signs back to 120, 130. So, this is even 150 at times. So, like 135 is in that range where there's like a sudden outward energy propagating from generally over here, but before the Pacific opened. So, like with this adjacent to over here ish somewhere over here that's interesting i haven't thought about that recently where essentially it like a bubble bursts and propagates energy outward that then physically pushes over here and shoves india back like into the space that was opening b between the two that then causes it to like fold on top of itself because of reasons i guess i don't know the way that there's two continental crusts and then they're, they're just kind of coming together with this like smaller thinner wedge between them maybe that just like gets crumpled just by the sheer pressure that's pushing over here from currents flowing this way and filling this space over here this way and just filling the space and also down this way I think where there probably wasn't really any pressure pushing downward here on India like the the mantle puncture hole has a wall form so it almost like once this stops putting a pressure out, there's really, and also a wall up here, it kind of naturally formed a boundary up here so that when the mantle puncture hole starting, stopped putting pressure, then any external pressure was really gonna just hold a boundary over here and push in here, I guess, to like reset it adjacent to uh, close up the Himalayas and actually involve ophiolites that were filling a empty gap that was forming in the space between. That's my thoughts. Uh, let's see if there's any 
like timings. I don't want to get too stu stuck on the individual things, but like even the date there, 66.1, just the mere fact that that is even a relevant date in any way. I'm not sure if they're using it because it, it is a boundary. Let's just kind of search around. Six, I think I have to download it. Some reason. Maximum. Oh God, let's go back a bit. A rhyolite flow had zircon separated from it, sampled from the bottom part of the studied section, it yielded a thorium corrected lead uranium weight, weighted mean eruption deposition age pretty much in that time frame and then like afterwards is it's still like it's a process that was un undergoing so like it makes sense that it like has an upper limit that's in that time frame that's like important in some way to some change in the process that's really integral to to the process it's not just like and then a couple grains of sand were blown on the top and we think we don't really know what happened in this time like something happened at this time regarding this thing and it was regarding like the process in a major way uh Rapid India-Eurasia convergence between 135 and 50. Collision of India, trans tethian sub subduction zone in late Cretaceous to early Paleocene time, which is this time frame, 65. Uh, 3,000 meter thick stratigraphy of Cardunk uh, volcanics from 70 to 60 million. Let's see, I think that's from this paper, but at this point I might just be hard dung. Yeah. Unrivaled opportunity to use paleomagnetism to reconstruct the paleo latitude of the trans Tethian sea something zone. I don't know shortly before onset of collision and test the two conflicting models that they're talking about here that I'm not sure exactly. We sought to determine the paleo latitude of Paleocene Cardunk volcanics on the northern margin of the Kohistan Ladakh arc in Ladakh, India. Three, three, or 70 to 60 million comprises rhyolitic and andesitic Lava flows, tufts, ignimbrites, ignimbrites. Let's see, so tufts are volcanic ash. Isn't ignimbrite volcanic ash? Like compacted volcanic ash? Just material from an eruption, okay, from pyroclastic flows. Pumice. Porous volcanic rock like froth. Okay, let me see. Bolivia, Argentina. Sorry, guys.
I guess I don't need to find the exact paper. I'm sorry to be... <sighs> Fuck. Fire ecology immediately prior to the end Cretaceous mass extinction. The Frenchman formation. This is in Canada. Okay, this is not related. Although, like, the timing is just, it's just another thing that I would just, like, be like, and then this is another thing that happened at that, at that time of 66 million years. Just, like, for reference sake, I know there's a, like, if every, like, year were to be as, like, thoroughly documented in a list, it would be so useful, but, like, to do it just with 66 million, I know will be insightful, because to know that, like, to recognize, to be like, okay, Chicxulub was happening, wow, this, this, like, all of these things were happening? Like, really starting, like, real close to one another. <laughs> and they're like major things. Like if it's if it's just like an overwhelming percentage of like major events on the earth are like focused on certain times where the like other times there's just less things going on, which is why we tend to, like, label cutoff periods for certain time frames, is it's like we're, we are seeing the significance of certain times where, like, a lot of things happen there, and then, like, there was this window where it kind of, like, went back down, and then a lot of things happen again, and again, like a wave. <clears throat> Okay, so what else we got? We got, I wrote down Bolivia, Northwest Argentina, stratigraphy. Shortening along the Pacific margin uh, began, I believe, 89 million years. Subsequent waning of activity. So, like, there was, like, a... a pressure, a current flowing along the margin of, of Argentina and Bolivia. So down here. Oh, where's Bolivia? Up here. I'm not sure what margin it's referring to then. I thought there were more like on on this coastline <laughs> like why not chilly like it's almost not i'm not sure what it's referring to then um but it's talking about this region uh shortening along the pacific margin in this region so it must just be generally referring to that there's like a compaction here but then the subsequent waning of the activity that then resume and I think around 89 so it, like it happened at 89 then it phased out at 89 I think and then it resumed at 73 million with a maximum uh, crustal shortening or that's what it's interpreted to be of between 71 and 66 million and then deformation and sedimentary effects from 59.5 to 58.2 million correlated with emplacement of coastal batholith. So maybe if I go to Scholar, Argentina, Bolivia, Geology, Coastal Batholith, 89 MA. That's gotta be it. It's based on the name. There's 71 to 66. And there's those dates. Okay, so this, that was that was from this paper. 
coastal basilisk. So it's just this particle getting in place, like a exchange of electrons or something. Something to do with the disintegration of the system decaying in the Pacific, injecting like nodes throughout the region of different types and inc seemingly inclusive of the coastal batholith in that region was brought to that region by the uh, maybe not from the particle itself but like induced to, to flow up word from a basement rock i'm not sure if it's basement rock i don't know okay let's go on next topic cenozoic tectonics and porphyry copper systems of chilean indies this one this one i found really Interesting. Cenozoic tectonics and porphyry copper systems of Chilean Andes. Hey, I found it. I was a little concerned that that many words. It might be like, no results. You typed to approximately. Okay. Subduction under South America has been active for the past 550 million years. 550, this has been going on. Okay, so I guess it didn't stop, but it had phases of of uh, more intense, <clears throat> around 70 to 60 million. And then we go on and see that, but large porphyry copper deposits were essentially emplaced during 60 to 50 million in southern Peru. And then the mid-Eocene, early Alo, Alago, go see, Alago, 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 43 to 32 million in late Miocene, Pliocene, 10 to 6 million in North and Central Chile. So in uh, Southern Peru and then North Chile, I guess, it was 43 to 32, and then Central Chile, 10 to 6. So we're just going. Peru, North Chile, Centr or Central Chile, I think it said. So basically, starting up here in the earlier on in the process and then moving down this way in some sort of maybe like spiraling deposition of something where like deposit, I wonder how close these deposits are. To like this kind of thing. These nodes. Maybe that's where they go. <laughs> okay. Um, so I thought this one was relevant enough that I wrote it down, and especially because it began and was active 550 to present, but there was this like influx of activity uh, from around 60 million to, I guess, 6 million and present, pretty much. Um, okay. Laramide Age push-up block in Big Bend region, Texas, the, called the Terlingula Solitario. Let's see. Terlingula Solitario. Try this one. So this one. The ter Terlingula solitarial structural block represents a Laramide age push-up block in the Big Bend region of Texas. Folding thrust faults, monoclines, east-northeast trending strike slip faults and grabins, grabins. Let's look that up again. That's like the raised or the the depression portion. That's the, the horse is the raised one. Like Sarastra is a horse. Grabin and so is Girnar. Grabin is the like basin region. Okay. Um, 
So the structural block has folding, thrust faults, monoclines. Let's look at monoclines too. Monocline. Step like fold in rock strata consisting of a zone of steeper dip within an otherwise horizontal or gently dipping sequence. Okay. Okay. And tectonic stylolites are associated with push up block development. Laramide age, I'm not, it's fine. Let's move on. Laramide age, east northeast directed comp compression caused sinistral movement, which I've come across this term, I believe, with regard to Baja BC. Relative motion is to the left. So just to the left. Okay. East, northeast, directed. I guess that way, T. <laughs> northeast directed compression caused this left movement on two east trending right stepping in echelon fault zones. This movement placed the area between fault overlap under transpression, which then responded by broad uplift on a northwest trending fold axis. Northwest trending. This fault movement placed the area. I'm just thinking if, like, maybe a. Do 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 fuck. <sighs> Where is it? There's one of these in particular that I there it is. So it's like opening up a like pore that has like widened and is bubbling up like an opening from a space within seemingly that just didn't fully break through. I'm just kind of thinking if there's some relationship to a process of that nature to what's going on here while I read this. Okay. With maybe the, like, structural control suggests uplift initiation between 68 and 66 million with the completion of push-up block formation by about 50 million, which is when things start to really just, like, stop. <laughs> it seems like, like there's this, like, at like 50 million it like seems to turn like the outflows seem to die off and the earth itself seems to generally stabilize and it's like emissions of current but like the earth like water and all the all the things on the surface are still stabilizing and coming to equilibrium so there's a lot still going on and like the still cooling off so like it's still going on it's just it seems like like the outflow of current maybe is especially slowing at or around 50 million radiometric dating even though maybe not because it needs to make it all the way to approximately zero and then really it slows around like younger Dryas. Although I'm, I've, I haven't looked into it to determine if not, if, if or if not, I was thinking maybe there's potential that younger Dryas is just based off of like a fundamentally different type of data 
that doesn't incorporate so much the geological data as the some other type of data like the carbon dating and blah 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 and something else that basically makes it so that that's like overlapping what's going on in this like span i'm not sure i haven't considered besides just like to be aware that that would be a possibility because i haven't checked into it and have thought of it i guess Okay, so next thing I came across was, so that was another, what I found interesting about this one was it was another, um, where is this one? Oh no, I moved on to the next one. The last one was it was another like porphyry deposit, of copper porphyry, um, seemingly related to the supernova of this particle that's depositing just a bunch of like otherwise not made materials through the process in those locations origin of volcanic rocks uh a what's called a, let's look up let's check it out a formation in tibet which is most certainly related to the Himalayas by just being adjacent. There we go. Formation, origin of volcanic rocks. There it is. I guess we can check out another paper just to like get some comparisons. I know I'm like, like searching for a date. The newly discovered, these rocks, volcanic rocks formed 63 to 66 million. Fifty-eight to fifty, sixty-nine in this image. Certainly in that time frame. Let's see what this is about. Continental collision related magmas, the origin and formation of the continental collision related magmas remains elusive. The volcanic rocks erupted during India Asian continental collision offer an ideal opportunity to explore their genesis and geodynamic process. Here we report a new zircon uh, uranium lead dating results and uh, uh, for, let's see what that is. Hafnium. The decent amount of isotopes, I guess. Whole rock. I don't know why I put isotope. Don't judge me. <laughs> well, I guess it'll help me find the elements faster than just HF. Maybe HF won't be enough. Whole rock element and strontium, maybe? I don't, I don't remember chemistry enough. I'm just going to jump past these things. Whole rock element and isotope data of volcanic rocks in this region. Uh, Lhasa terrain. I feel like I've came across that term. Southern Tibet. Uh, let's check it out. Where are we looking at? Is this where the Shaligr near Shaligrams? No. That's the Tethian Himalayas region. Uh. Oh, shit. Or maybe it's the high Himalayas. I'm not sure. Shalagrams originates from here. Somewhere around here. I think this place, I think every time I come in, it's here, but I'm pretty sure there's shallograms here too. There's for sure more shallograms in this region than just over here. Like maybe even over here. Like this is part of a shallogram though. 
There's so many shallogram features across the world that I've pointed out. Don't judge me for the, like, that it doesn't look that much like it. Or if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> shallogram playlist. Okay. Um, why was I looking at this? Oh, yeah. That's probably in the high Himalayas. So it's pretty much from this node over to the other node. Like there's nodes almost, like right here, over to here. So like kind of in this range. It's probably like one of the frequencies. So here, off of this region, especially off of this spine, it vibrates in here through this region and different wavelengths and things going on that are more complex than just a simple wave, but it certainly does it. And then it does it again, though, at different like wavelengths. This one goes all the way down here and like through here. And then maybe it doesn't quite like go up this way, but maybe it does in part like it connects through here but also has a segment going more in the wave-like shape going up here also up this way over here there's like a fish thing going on from like here to here that then has another like tail around here somewhere it's hard to see Then this wavelength like there. All sorts of things that are basically just vibrating off of this segment. And then this region, I guess it's getting compacted by it. Like there's a current flowing over this way that's vibrating through this region. And stuff up here that gets to a certain point is just able to go back through this region. There ends up being a current back flowing this way across here, just generally speaking, that creates shallogram features, even over to here. So like, whereas down here, off of this, vibrating thing. Let's make sure, like, say right here. Sixty-six point nine two thirty-six point six four. Google Maps needs that the other way. So we need it to be over here-ish to be remote. Okay, so it's pretty much over here. So it kind of looks like it starts doing the vibrating thing like back here. I also was not at the very end. I put, did more than like, let's try like as far as we can see this extends to to the east, like right there, 70 and 36.5. I get enough. Let's see how there that goes. That goes pretty much here. So like running into where that starts to really vibrate. So I've talked about this before, where there's basically a current coming out of the mantle puncture hole here in Pakistan that flows in all directions underneath the crust and flows this way up and then ends up basically fanning out in a in a all directions, but like over time, the current takes a final form where the, it ends up having currents flowing in this wet direction that are applying a pressure, holding a boundary here that then produces like a region, a separator region between the current where it goes more so here than in all directions. Like maybe initially it was more able to flow in all directions when there wasn't like a pressure over here. But then it started to build up and that led to a boundary and that boundary physically had the pressures from the mantle puncture hole f still flowing up into it 
to that boundary, but it what then happened is it basically filled this region and over here with like pressures, but then the current was flowing more so this way, holding a boundary here. And so it would physically fill up with pressure and that would push this leg physically upward, like move the mound this like this way but then the current that's flowing into the mound is more like closer to the source of the current so the pressure increases on this thing and so basically at some point it jolts backward or or maybe even not jolts but more so like begins to vibrate back the other way in a more wave-like ma manner where then like it starts to push the current back this way and then the gasket outflows over here and up this way a bit but especially over here it seems and just out and so it basically produces a vibratory leg over here that physically causes the current flowing off of the vibratory leg from underneath across from basically up here to collide with that vibratory leg and take its shape at, a, at different times in the process so that it essentially creates this like repetitive vibrational frequencies through the I called it the songs of the Himalayas maybe sound songs of the Himalayas where I talked about it more although I pretty well went through it in terms of like a good amount of the details of how there's something of that nature going on there <clears throat> why was I talking about that I'm not sure let's see oh, yeah, we were looking at this Tibetan plateau region so back to this region so for sure this is a related to that maybe 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 it's if it's a six like this thing this is in a formation it's not so it's not like a mountain you know it's not like some structure that's it's the tibetan plateau so it's just like uplifted but it's a plateau so it's not like how you say <laughs> it's just got formations so in essence my it, it brings to mind that this is something that is for sure happening and um for sure happening where in Sarashtra let's go here which is this region the Deccan traps that flowed in this region physically flowed from over here and across the Deccan, or the Sarashtra Peninsula region. And as they flowed, they physically pushed a wall of material that kept building and building until it basically built a large mound down here that caused resistance so it flows and flows and flows accumulates a basaltic mound which is what that which is what this is this is like the end result of that basaltic mound that's formed by this current flowing across and then it produces a resistance that then leads the current to basically have to deflect around the resistance and so there's a storm involved that's moving this current so it basically is not balanced with the outflow here so it physically moves over here i know but it's a lot of information where there's like a lot of things like <laughs> wait what <laughs> 
So it moves over here, but then it basically shapes this region and causes a back current this way to flow around the mound and over here. And like because the mound is there, it still has a wall. So it essentially builds a back current this way. And then as this region overall fills, then the, the pressures cause the storm to move down here. So it discharges like that. Okay. And so overall, Mount Gurnar is shaped then, and all these are shaped by this process. This mound is shaped, and the whole region is shaped by this process. So two, uh, perhaps, is going on here where there's a current flowing, and it's just building up, like, generally a mound underneath the crust. Not so much of a mound that it's, like, becoming totally resistant to the current, but like, I guess something about it made it fan out in a way where it's like a big neutron, like it takes up space underneath the cross, but it's not like currents flowing, erupting, things happening where there it's like volcanic or anything maybe. I'm not sure if there's volcanoes in the region. Uh, <clears throat> but my thought is generally like it built up a mound and maybe around 66 million it built up of enough amount to basically force this current to start deflecting downwards so i'm not sure if the tibetan plateau let's see if like there's a difference like up here In terms of, it might take some some looking into it. During the Cretaceous, so that's good at least, because it doesn't have to have like the things that are more relevant. Pre-Cambrian crystalline basement, crystalline basement. So maybe it was already one of these more like substantial structures that just by its nature cause currents to flow to it. Containing magmatic rocks from the Paleozoic to Cenozoic, 66 million to present. It is thoughts, so magmatic rocks. So yeah, let's let's go through this a little closer. Basement rock, crystalline rocks, just like solid, and then overlaid with sedimentary strata. So from this time period, there was strata being deposited atop it. So there was a flow in this time frame atop it, depositing or at least atop the crystalline basement, maybe not atop the cross completely until some later time, I don't know. Mesozoic also, so until 66 million, we don't really see like explosive um, type of rocks. Rocks more evident of like the earth expansion process is more so sedimentary rocks. Okay, and containing magmatic rocks from the Paleozoic to Cenozoic. Last cr crustal block to accrete to the Eurasian plate is thought to be the last crustal block to accrete to the Eurasian plate before it collided the Indian plate in the Cenozoic. Last crustal block to accrete to the Eurasian plate. So even this chunk is flaw like i've never really seen anyone saying like also tibet comes in hot too <laughs> that's a pretty big region usually i see it more shaped like this like that and just kind of we swing on in but you're saying this also swinging on in also this
Let's see. What are we got here? Pardon me, I know. <laughs> uh, Ming Shui formation and, Li and Yian formation. Let's see if they are also in the Tibetan Plateau. Formed about 66. Ming Shui. Yian formation. Okay, let's see. Do any of these? Maybe just click one. I don't see any exact dates listed on that. Oh, there's that. Upper boundary. Corresponding formations. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Song, let's just see where it is. It's way over here, it's way over here. And so that's somewhere else is going on then. Song, the animal formation, and animal basin. Uh, major Cretaceous rift structure. The, I don't want, I'm sorry to just like jump to the dates. The thermal history and age pattern document the timing of the unconformities, whatever they're talking about exactly, uh, in the Cretaceous succession, one at 65 to 50, one at also 86 to eight, or 88 to 86. Doesn't seem completely random. I've seen that kind of time frame pop up. With regard to like Baja BC. Cooling event. Afterwards, after 50 million, so that kind of goes along with the cooling concept. Uh, where, like, the supernova had completed the, like, emission step and was then just needing to cool and go through those kinds of processes and stabilize. Uh, okay, then, uh, geochemical evolution of igneous rocks and changing magma sources during the formation and closure of the Central American land bridge of Panama... Oh, that's the paper, I think. Early rock arcs indicate that by 66 million years ago, the mantle... Radiometric dating. The mantle wedge beneath Panama was chemically distinct, i.e. more depleted and highly variable in composition compared to Galapagos material from which earlier Caribbean large igneous province magmas derived. I read the paper name, I think, so that's probably good enough. Uh, let's see. Pittsmont. This one is not precisely uh, copper gold. Pittsmont porphyry. It's copper 
molybdenum, maybe? Maybe I'll just click this, see if I, we can get a date on it. Just type 66. Oh. They might not be from in any way relating to that, really. Or saying it in something less specific with that's more words like late Cretaceous, something more like Cretaceous lines. Okay, let's see, let's just find this. Is this the one I was just looking at? No, Montana. So this one's in Montana. Or is this the one? Weird. It says 66 there. Well, five quarts porphyry rhyolite dikes were in place at 65, or 65 to 67, 67, 65. This is in Montana. So around the explosion region, basically, at the boundaries where it can at least like reach into the underneath and up well, like ramp up in practically. Uh, seven or two copper molybdenum t deposits. 66 to 62 million, according to the one I was looking at. This one seems to have dates generally in the region of 60s, of the, the like major supernova time frame. It's, it's going back to 77, we see. New data reveal the following sequence of events. Thermal study of the country rock indicates that at the 77 million granite cooled by 4 million years after emplacement, so 72.9. So it had a phase of cooling. Five quartz rhyolite, porphyry rhyolite dikes were emplaced at 67 to 65 million, another at 60, into the cooled granite without resetting argon dates. In country rock, 58 white mica and potassium feldspar samples from alteration in envelopes adjacent to silver gold polymetallic loads in outer parts of the district, zinc rich loads in intermediate parts, and copper rich loads in the district center yield. Ages of 73 to 70 for silver rich, 65 to 64 for copper rich and complex age spectra of 69 to 65 million for zinc rich loads. The data show that silver gold polymetallic loads occupied cross district fractures by about 73 million forming the greater but mining district. At 67 to 65 million minor quartz porphyry dikes were emplaced, only minor, I'm not sure. This is the same place. Pittsmont. I'm not sure if this is Pittsmont. Generally occurring in that time frame. I guess from a the problem is when people see it from like a truly the amount of radiometric dating years, it's hard to fathom what I'm saying and the significance of what I'm saying. Like, because the time frames are close, it doesn't seem as close when they're, like, truly believed to be millions of years, like, between the 69 and 65. <clears throat> okay, let's move on, though, because I saw lots of cool stuff. And uh, certainly the porphyries occurring in this time frame are significant, and whether or not they're exactly at 66, 65 million kind of time, 
this kind of time frame, it doesn't really matter because it looks like they're generally occurring in that time frame, like more spanning the spectrum of time and maybe even dependent on cool things about how like nuances of radioactive decay and all the like how atoms are made things that are just not like able to be found otherwise we can't we can't collide particles together and get as high of a resolution image of reality as we can by just looking at the earth and understanding it to be the same <laughs> that's that's the only way same huh same <sighs> Shoot. Shoot. Sahul platform paper. Oh, I guess that's just. Sahul platform. So, hydrocarbon migrated mainly from the upper Jurassic frigate shale. Shale, I find in, found interesting. There's some. It seems to be a like method of moving layers. <clears throat> Uh, source rock in the Melidia Graben Depot Cantre to the Plover Formation Sandstone Reservoir in the Sunset Loxton Shoals at 66 million. Okay, not too exciting, but I just thought maybe I'd take note of hydrocarbon type things like oil. Things where it's like, well, what is going on with that? First of all, it's not fossil fuels. <laughs> It's not actually fossils, it's made by the Earth processes, probably by the Earth expansion processes, really, but maybe always made by the Earth regardless of, like, this, the quantity is probably more, and the distribution and other things are probably more uh, dependent on the, like, size of the Earth than whether or not it has it, just the, the quantity. Sokoto Basin, Nigeria, 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 56 to 66 million age of formation. So there's a basin in, in Nigeria called the Sokoto Basin. Let's see. Another, so another basin. Another basin. That's interesting. It made me, it made me think of pumice, volcanic earth that has another basin form in the volcanic pumice of the earth basins all over it when the earth became like a white porous type of por pyroclastic igneous rock relatively speaking in some manner due to its expansion process just that there's all so many basins formed at, a, at around 66 million maybe is a sign to something of that nature because it's, it's like it's Nigeria so it's not really like the epicenter <laughs> although let's see if it says it well, it's probably just, that's good enough. Let's see what the region looks like. It must be there, yeah, okay. Right there. It looks like it's got a little mouth and a face head and a body, like current was maybe flowing, I don't know, just... I guess there's a basin which current was flowing. That actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that is how current flows. Like we see that a lot of times, a lot of places. We see that over here, here with like the head with a mouth. Over here, and apparently at that basin. Okay. So that's keep that's a good thing to keep in mind that that's probably something going on. Oh, I hope I'm okay. Fuck. I think I need some antibiotics. Fuck. 
Oh, I'm insane. I need some fucking help, dudes. <laughs> Talkeet? No, I talked about that one in Alaska. It has a radiometric dating, 67, 66 million. Dacite domes, 71 to 66 million into the Rio Kwame formation. Let's see if that's a. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Let's move on. Okay. Let's see. Sokoto Basin. And that's it. Okay. A couple, like, eh, whatever things, but a couple pretty substantial ones. I was also trying to find, like, maybe we can look at some other. When did the Alps form? Like, I, I come across this, but I'm trying to find it in a technical paper. Although, that's a good sign. Where did this one say? Over tens of, like, so it's over a period of time, but maybe from, like, 65 to, like, 35. That would make sense if it is. I'm not saying it is with some certainty. I hope that would be cool because then it would make sense. Like, especially I could see it, like, going on to closer. But, like, just based on, like, the cooling process, it would make sense if it started to slow down more, like, in the 30s. Merry Christmas. I don't want to read this too closely right now. So there's that. When did the and Andes are more recent, but I know I've heard that like there's dating back further and further in some ways. Like the Andean mountain system is the result of of tectonic forces dating back to 65 million years is what this said that built upon earlier geological activity about 250 million years ago the crustal plates constituting the earth's land mass were joined together into the supercontinent Pangaea the subsequent breakup of Pangaea and of its southern portion, Gondwana, dispersed these plates outward where they began to take the form and position of the present day continents. Earth expanded, but besides the point, the collision or convergence of two of these plates, the con continental South American plate and the oceanic Nazca plate, gave rise to the or orogenic mountain building activity that produced the Andes. Nazca plate and the Oh, okay. <sighs> Fair enough. Many of the rocks are of great age, so that makes it a little harder to tell when exactly they formed, when it formed. Ancient granitic continental fragment that constitutes much of Brazil and deposited between about 450 and 250 million years ago on the Craton's western flank. Began as sediments erode. Okay, sorry, I jumped ahead. <laughs> Began many of these rocks comprising the present day Cordi Cordillera Cordilleras. I assume that's just general term. That's more related to the Andes and not nothing to do with the Rockies. Are of great age. They began as sediments eroded from the Amazonia Craton. 
the ancient granitic continental fragment that constitutes much of Brazil and deposited between about 450 and 250 million years ago on the Craton's western flank. The weight of these deposits force a subsidence down warping. Yeah. Of the crust and the resulting pressure and heat metamorphosed the deposits into more resistant rocks. Less sandstone, siltstone, and limestone were transformed respectively into quartzite shale and marble. Respectively. Sandstone into quartzite. Where did I see quartzite recently? I want to say I saw it on a seamount, maybe Shatsky Rise. Seltstone to shale. Shale I've seen in relationship to like a rock useful for sliding layers. Limestone to marble, that's interesting. Pretty sure limestone is quarried in Florida. So it's... it's okay, I mean... Just things I observe. I don't know if it's of any relevance to things. Just it's almost like different octaves. A B C D E F G H I J K. Wait, it's A B C D E F G again. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't know if the mu I've heard a real interesting arguments, if you will, that the musical methodologies are a little fundamentally like missing and um, not quite right so it's not capturing the essence of the music quite as well and makes it a little harder to understand maybe in the way it is i've heard it pray part of me anyone who's like <gasps> I thought for sure you wouldn't ever talk about anything that offended me as a musician. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now you're fucking offending me, asshole. The result of the latter plate's westernward movement in response to the opening of the Atlantic Ocean to the Isabel. Intensity of this activity increased during the Cenozoic, and the present shape of the Cordilleras emerged. The accepted time period for their rise had been from 15 to 6 million years ago. However, the use of more advanced techno techniques, researchers in the early 21st century were able to determine that the uplift started much earlier, about 25 million years ago. So not... I'm surprised there's no evidence. Like, it's it's kind of anomalous that they're not older, admittedly. It just points to something, though. <laughs> and it ain't that I'm wrong. That's it. It ain't that I'm wrong. <laughs> Unless uh, science is wrong. What you what you think your science? I mean, I did rewrite it pretty pretty substantially. <laughs> Just because it ain't been like processed and integrated into society is kind of like that's not a scientific point. That is a rebuttal, you know not rigorous of a rebuttal off oh, we haven't said that what you said is okay yet so can't say those kinds of things until we give you the okay you gotta be humble ma'am i don't know i said ma'am <laughs> gotta be humble man highly likely these have gone up slowly over the last at least the last 30 million Gradual thickening of the crust. So maybe it's related to like a as a backstop to like slow the energy propagation in one direction, where all the energy is just being kind of absorbed into. That just cools off the process as a sink, reminiscent of the sink of this region air valley trend I 
or range, mountains, whatever, whatever its exact name, or maybe even supergroup, I guess. Mobile Belt, so many names for this thing. Seems pretty cool, then. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. I think that's probably a good place to stop. Sorry, guys. Do I... I was just thinking... Do I keep looking into the Andes? Hour 15. Let's go a little bit more. It does look like they're earlier. Major mountain erogenies by date. Let's see if the, anything even remotely approaches. Cenozoic. Where is this one? Ew. The Rasia. Uh, cartwheels. Okay. Okay. I mean, just the Alps was a pretty big ad. And the Himalayas, pretty big ad to the list of things that were occurring concurrent to 66 million years. Or, like, major aspects of. Here's something, Laramie. There am I, okay. Um, here's um, that one too. Both are the Rockies. Really? Australian. New Zealand. Nothing in either of those. Although there's definitely... Australia has a lot of stuff going on. Like, these ones from Peterman down through this one are all during the Earth expansion process. This even says 200 million to present. I don't know. That seems a little... They're almost saying... Oh, that's, that's fine. Let's go to Scholar. It's hard to find. Uh, when Andy's formation age. A very sharp divine, a very sharp what? Okay, they're looking at Zircon. Detrital Zircon is certainly beneficial. I see late Cretaceous. Let's see. Let's look around. New sensitive high resolution ion microprobe. This is uh, 2003. Uh, ion microprobe reverse geometry, uh, uranium lead, detrital zircon data, establishing the timing of onset of foreland basin subsidence in the Magellan's Basin in the age of the Patagonian Andes in southernmost Chile. Initiation of the Ma Magellan's foreland basin is signaled by the abrupt occurrence of sandstone. Uh, it's not. Uh, detrital zircon analysis demonstrate that the Punta. Barassa formation is not older than 92 plus or minus 1 million years, and that the linked Andean belt started forming in the Turonian. I haven't came across that, so that's probably not. Oh, sh so Andes. That's actually a good. This is real good. This is a good sign that the 
current, because it, it appears like the current coming out from under Papua New Guinea. I know. Through the Solomon Islands. If that doesn't make sense, then other, all their videos <laughs> also have information about it. But there's a, basically a current flowing throughout the world in all directions that then shapes two different ways where it ends up coming out here and then fanning out like this specifically over here where this like this shape is along these boundaries and um, Papua New Guinea and that current, a current coming underneath Papua New Guinea which was over here essentially got uh, interacted with the current coming underneath Mexico and produced this thing, which then started to separate, or actually, before, like this was at the end of the separation process, sorry. The current initially was more like this, coming in down this way and then into here, but then it started to flow down between this way as well and carve that, that way and carve this way as it went under here and just like a flame, fanned out like a flame and then also carved the boundaries. And then when it did that, the, this severance then like rebonded as a single unit around 66 million years, it seems in the Panama Papers I've been running into. And then, um, so then the current comes down here and starts to open this, where New Zealand is formed around like 80 something million. They're the region. I don't know if New Zealand itself, I can't remember. There's so many details. <laughs> I can't remember them all, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> but New Zealand formed sometime around then. Or at least with move there. Okay, this region around the eighties in the eighties, and so what's there is South America opening up, so that this current flowing down here actually initially is flowing out along, and then like starts to push more like from the base, and like maybe even physically catch in like notches. I don't know if it did it all the way down here like this, though. Like a current. This one doesn't really make sense. I'm not sure. Like it almost has to come in at an angle and get like caught. Like here. And start to just open it. And basically push on the, on the whole continent because of this. Because it creates like a divot by uh, like forcing into a boundary <clears throat> where then the current is more able to just apply pressures on the overall continent as it becomes more freely movable in the process so that it, that type of thing actually is applying. It looks like it is doing that. Like you can kind of see it like skipping down the side here. Like boop, 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 boop. This one's kind of like in a, like a little not like it here, but like generally speaking, it's the right angle for like a current that's generally coming this way and influencing this side. And then like cat getting caught on notches. Here's that notch. So maybe that notch kind of encouraged the current to go above it and below it. And over time, uh, there was maybe a notch there that was going through there. I don't know. But initially, like, it was just carving a crack through until it met resistance at a point, And then it just kept pushing into the resistance. <laughs> until like bonds broke and then it was able to move 
And then as it moved, the current also was able to like go around it. Basically, it moved it out of the way. And then the current kept going. And just kept going down. But so as it moved it, though, it uh, must have essentially this current then starts to pr produce space where the Solomon Islands were down here and they move up this way. And so as that's happening, the the current that's coming down through and colliding with the boundary of S South America like here and building like a, a wall from just the sheer quantity of current and then moving it to a new position where it builds more material along the boundary and then, then just like deposits at specific points on it. So it would kind of make sense, back to what I was saying, that the Andes, especially in the southern region, I'm not sure where exactly I was saying, like down here maybe, would have some earlier signs in, the, in this time frame. Let's see what else this paper says. Ophiolites, so ocean, ocean cross pretty much, depositions in the region, and then thrust belt from around 90 to 55, I guess, especially, although maybe to present even. Zircon age dates this study. This study did not even get to their volcanic arc, volcanic peak. I mean, it's in the right time frame. So basically, again, another mountain range, at least that overlaps the time frame. So making it like, because the other ones are like more precisely to the time frame, there may be. Uh, it just makes it more clear that there's more going on than just like a comet is hitting the Earth at 66 million years ago, and that's all that was going on for the dinosaurs and maybe Deccan traps. We've been like those two things, but like there's a lot going on. <laughs> Are we sure we know what we're talking about? Me neither, though, so sorry, guys. Love you. Peace.